Okay, this is a model of the U.S. Space Shuttle built by NASA. It's one 144th scale. This particular shuttle is the Discovery as it would be seen preparing for launch. You can see the shuttle there. The black section is all the tiles for the re-entry. I've got the uh, upper portion set up here for, um, let's put this up, show you. This allows the loading of fuel into the liquid fuel tank and you can see the two solid boosters. This large structure to the left is a structure they use. It can actually swing all the way over and cover the shuttle so they can work on the um, payload to load and structure the payload uh, before launch. And it's a pretty neat structure. As you can see it has stairways for the people to get up into it and all the way up to the top with doorways and ladders all over the places, hatches up on top. And it pivots around that that section right there. You then have a large gantry where the space shuttle is fueled and or can be fueled and worked on with an elevator going from the bottom all the way up to the top. This is a very nice model built by Ravel. And uh, I had two granddaughters help me build this. I'll have a separate video with them in it. Uh, they really enjoyed it. It was a great experience. There were a total of six shuttles built. The Enterprise was the first one, but it was built only for atmospheric tests. So aerodynamically and weight-wise, it was capable and was carried aloft several times and would land on lake beds and on concrete runways to test the flight characteristics of the shuttle in the atmosphere. And that was occurring in the 1977 time frame. Then in 1981, we had the first flight into space of the space shuttle. And after that, over a 30 year period until 2011, there were 135 flights. Sadly, there were two major disasters. The shuttle Challenger in 19, January of 1986 was destroyed after liftoff before reaching space. Uh, weather conditions that contributed to that were basically the, the temperature which affected the seals on these solid boosters. There were warnings given, but the flight people and the people in charge felt that conditions were not so bad. And even though the thigh call engineers warned them, they took off anyway and the shuttle came apart uh, at about, I don't know, 100,000 feet. It was, it was only a few minutes into the launch and all the astronauts, all seven on board, were killed. Then in 2003, the shuttle Columbia disintegrated as it entered the atmosphere at about 200,000 feet, it disintegrated. And the loss for that was due to after, right at launch, a piece of foam came loose and hit the left wing. And it is felt that it damaged the, the heat shield tiles enough to allow hot gases to get into that wing and that wing came apart that morning in 2003 and ultimately uh, caused a catastrophic failure of the entire shuttle and again uh, in 1986 parts of the shuttle rained down across East Texas and uh, those photos showed but the, the three remaining of the five flyable shuttles, the Discovery, the Endeavour, and the Atlantis, continued to work. And the shuttle 
in those 135 missions performed a lot of very important tests, laboratories, satellites of all type, both public and military, were put into space. Uh, the, probably the biggest feat was the construction of the space station. The, sh the shuttle was very involved, of course, in the carrying of parts up to the space station for it to be built. Hubble telescope and all sorts of um, other labs and whatnot were taken up to space and it was very invaluable uh, contribution. You can see in there the, the markings inside the, the area where the shuttle payload can be worked on. And the shuttle is uh, transported to the launch from its main assembly and construction building, which is a good mile or more away. And you can see these large treads, this entire lower section crawls all the way over to the launch pad so the shuttle can then launch into space. In 2003, uh, the last space shuttle missions were uh, uh, occurred, or excuse me, 2011, I apologize, 2003 was when the Columbia uh, disaster occurred. But in 2011, the last three shuttles all flew, the Discovery, the Endeavour, and the Atlantis, and then the, sh the space shuttle program was closed down. Since that time, we've had to rely on other methods. Uh, we have new methods of getting astronauts and equipment up to the space station and into space. Uh, one of them is a, a new smaller shuttle that has not flown into space yet, but has been scheduled in remote control to load the space station. Uh, SpaceX, Dragon, and other companies uh, are building those. And uh, they also have uh, entered into the contest to uh, go to the moon and to Mars. And of course, uh, NASA with Boeing is building a large, larger than the Saturn V uh, rocket to, to be able to take our astronauts into space, first to the moon and then to Mars. But this model I've always, I've had in my stash and wanted to build for a long time. And here lately with my granddaughters, we were able to build it as a tribute to those 14 astronauts who died and to the United States overall who, who built and then utilized the shuttle for the good, certainly of the United States, but of all mankind and uh, allowing the things like the Hubble telescope and the many uh, satellites as well as most importantly, the space station to be built. Now, Ravel also makes a 144 scale space station that I may purchase and build as well. It's a monster model like this, mainly because of the size of the uh, solar panels to power the space station. But with that, we'll close with one last look at the shuttle Discovery sitting on the pad. This, by the way, is uh, July 4th, 2018. Thanks.